Welcome, everybody. My name is Benjamin Kamenetsky. Um, on behalf of myself and my wife, Esti, welcome to our home. This is such a zechus for us to um, uh, host this event with Rav Rosner. Um, just uh, by way of brief introduction, I mean, we're in the period of Bein HaMetzarim, um, which is described as, you know, kind of we're stuck in between Gader Mizem and Gader Mizem. We're stuck in between these two you know, Shavasar Batamas and Tishabav, Shavasar Batamas, you know, according to the uh, Mishnah Tanis, the first thing that happened was the Nishtabru Haluchos and uh, Tishabav, which is where we lost, um, you know, where the Chait Hamaraglim, where we lost, um, and in a sense, the, you know, what does it mean, Nishtabru Haluchos, that because of what we did with the Chait Egel, we lost, in a certain sense, the Torah. Um, you know, the Torah that we got with the Luchos Shneos was a different kind of Torah than the Luchos Rishonos. And same thing with Eretz Yisrael, that we, in a sense, we lost Eretz Yisrael. No, Eretz Yisrael, we would have had, absent the Ched HaMaraglim, is substantively different than what we have today. And say that, you know, had we not, had Moshe Rabbeinu taken us into Eretz Yisrael at the time, we wouldn't have been a, 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 a uh, any of the gullus and the, the Chorba and everything else, it would seem that the greatest tikkun we could do in this part of Beinam Mitzarim is to um, is to make a siyum in not only a siyum in Torah but in Yerushalmi. So you know to like come back to you know kind of as a tikkun for the luchos rishonos or for start for the luchos rishonos for the uh, um, and then as a tikkun for what we do with Eretz Yisrael to have an Adam Gadol like uh, Rabbi Rosner from Eretz Yisrael. Um, leading us in a shear on the Yerushalmi and in the Siam would seem the most appropriate um, uh, thing to do in, during during this period. Um, it is a schus gadol, as Rabbi Rosner never remembers. I was his counselor in 1987 in Camp Morasha. I made such a rosham on him, he never remembers that I was his <laughs> counselor in 1987 in Camp Morasha. So, um, I always say I had many amazing counselors. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not from Siegel, so I have Mark Landsman, Ian Hagler, uh -huh. Hashem. Okay, so anyway, so um, without, without further ado, again, it's Chos Gadol, um, Harav Rosner. Okay, just before we go on the recording, uh, just uh, you know, I want to thank the Kamenetskis, and uh, um, I do have wonderful, fond memories. I had amazing, amazing counselors, and I haven't left camp. I've been in camp, uh, <laughs> been in camp for many, many decades. And um, Baruch Hashem, you should, uh, you should be zochet to continue learning together and uh, to, be, uh, to be teaming up in uh, spreading Torah for, uh, for many, many years. Because you need to have nachas from all your family. And uh, your house should be always a base v'ad l'chachamim. Oh, no. Again, uh, thank the OU, thank uh, Rav Shwed and the whole team for, um, for organizing this, but also organizing all daf and uh, everything that entails, both the Yerushalmi and the Bavli and the Al-Parsha and the... Uh, all Mishnah and all Navi, maybe one day, and uh, you know, all everything, trying to uh, to get it all in. But it's uh, really a special, uh, a special schus. Also, just want to say before uh, before we start that the um, really part of the impetus when the when the OU called and uh, you know about giving a share on the Yushalmi, and I originally said no, and the Yushalmi asked me again, and I said no, and uh, other people calling, and um, really uh, you know, something that was is unreal, unbelievable, unreal, an area of Torah that really has been. Uh, you know, muznach um, and not and not focused on, um, but um, I really felt also that it just works out that um, you know I'm in uh, for another four days I'm in Yud Beis Chodesh for my mother. My mother's yard site is on uh, Rosh Chodesh uh, Rosh Chodesh Av. I'm flying back for 36 hours for the for the yard site. Dakamas Matseva, but I also was thinking of her. I'm like, what? Let me try. Let me try. And uh, Baruch Hashem, it's uh, to have the siyum within the within the week. Of, um, of, um, of the yard site is really a, a tremendous nechama. She always taught us uh, the passion of Eretz Yisrael. All of her kids uh, made aliyah. And uh, Baruch Hashem, it's really uh, a schus. It should be an aliyah for her neshama. Amen. Okay, we ready to, uh, to start it up? Okay. Okay, let's get into Demai Ayin Zion. Last daf in Mesechah's Demai. Unbelievable. The third opportunity that we have to make a siyum on uh, Mesechta in Yerushalmi, Brachos, Peah, and Demai. We haven't had an Agadata in about two months. But uh, Baruch Hashem, we've made it to the last daf. Uh, way back when, we had about uh, the, uh, the donkey of uh, 
the Pinchas Ben Yair, if you remember, we had towards the beginning. Uh, but maybe we'll talk a little bit of Yashkafe at the end of this year, just to uh, wrap things up in uh, Mesechta's Demai. And again, we thank the, the sponsors of the Mesechta, again, Michael and Naomi Nudel, Avram and Deborah Weinfeld, for the sponsorship. So we are discussing the last Mishnah in Mesechta's Demai, which we had yesterday. Yesterday's daf was, if a person has 100 barrels of wine, 100 barrels of wine, and says, oh, a whole outer row is Meiser Rishon. So that's a problem. Why wasn't he thinking which one he was doing? We're not asking Kashas about why people make certain ambiguous <coughs> statements, but this is what happened. And um, what do you do now? Because now you have you know, one of the outer rows, right? It's all 100 in a, in a square, 10 by 10, 100 barrels. One of the outer rows is Meiser Rishon, and we know 10% of that, one of those barrels is Chumas Meiser, which is usur for a Yisrael to eat. The Meiser Rishon, as we've said often, Meiser Rishon, okay, a Yisrael could eat it as long as he pays the levy. And Meiser Shani, I could be Poda, and uh, I'll bring the, the money up to Yerushalayim. The Chumas Meiser is always the, the issue in this whole Masechta. It's the Chumas Meiser, the Chuma in the Meiser Rishon. So here, what do you do? So the Gemar, the Mishnah described how if somewhere one of the outer rows is Meiser Rishon, so one of the ones in the outer row is my, it's Chumas Meiser. So if you want to save yourself some money, take two corner barrels diagonal from each other, and then you're covered. Because those two corner barrels, all four rows are covered. But in the second case, a person says, half of an outer row should be Meiser Rishon. Half of an outer row. So somewhere, one of the five. So then taking two opposite corners is not going to be good enough, because that doesn't cover each half outer row. So you have to take all four. You have to take all four. And then the Gemara went into other cases. What if you say one of the rows, half of the rows, one of the barrels, and the Gemara went through all of the uh, determination of how you figure out the Chumas Meiser. So the Gemara here on the top of Ayin Zainam and Aleph is, uh, is going to discuss the case number two, as we just said. Half of the, we said half of an outer row. Half of an outer row, one of those sets of five, that's Meiser Rishon. So one, and that's Meiser Rishon for 50 barrels. Right, because you need 10%. If you only half, so that's five barrels. So it's going to be my for shown for, uh, for half the barrels. And what does the Mishnah say? Well, you're stuck. You don't know what to do. You've got to take, got to take four barrels. You've got to take each corner, each corner barrel. Says the Gemara, I have a way he could save some money. I have a way he doesn't have to give away four barrels. What could he do? There's still 50 barrels of Tevel. So you know what you could do? V'yitol shtayim. Just say the other half of the rows that I didn't touch yet, I didn't designate yet, those should be my Rishon, and now it's basically st- case one. So if you're back to case one, so then you'll take all, f- take just two, Shtayim Shehein Arba, right? You don't have to, so why do you have to say, oh, you have to take all four? You still have 50 of Tevel, so designate and say the other half of rows that I didn't designate yet, so I'm back to case number one. So Vihitol Shtayim, why don't we do why don't we do that? And that's what the Marafulda says on top. Hashas Maksheha. It's not Chatsi Shura Kule. Lama Yitalab Yachavios. Yach Serva Yomar. Why doesn't he say again? Chatsi Ha'acher Shalosa Shura. Yeah, Meiser. Allah Shalosh Tevel Hanish Arim. The Yahashta Shura Shlem and Meiser. So you get back basically to case one, and then all you have to do is to take off two and not four. Vito Shtayim. Answers the Gemara. Rebbe Kohen. Right, we, we're introduced to many new. Uh, rabbis in the Yerushalmi that we didn't know in the Bavli. Rabbi Cohen, B'Shem Rabbonin de Kesara, and the rabbis of Kesaria. You don't know what the problem is. The case of the Mishnah is to be talking about, you can't do that anymore. Because you took off my Rishon from the other half rows from somewhere else. You had other Tevel. So now the other half are Chulin, Mesukanim. So you're stuck. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. So this is the only uh, option that you have. Good. Tani. Says the Brisa, you lefanav chavios. You have two barrels. Now back to barrels. We're not going to talk about the Mishnah case uh, right now. Two barrels. Achas shall meiser tevel tamer. Viachas shall meiser tevel tame. You have two barrels. One of meiser rishon. It calls it meiser tevel because it's tevel lagabi. You didn't take off the chumas meiser yet. So one barrel of meiser tevel tamer. One barrel of meiser tevel tame. So what's the issue? You don't know which one is tame, which one is tahar. <coughs> And you don't want to, and what do you say? You're going to take from each one, then you're just going to have to treat both of them as tame. And that's a problem because tame truma has limited value. Truma tahara is beautiful, amazing. A coin could eat it, a coin could give it to his wife and to his family. Truma tahara. But here, and truma to, uh, um, truma spicer is the same halacha as truma. The problem is, if it is 
Truma Tameya or Trumas Meiser Tameya that it can only use by, uh, be used by a Kohen to, uh, to, if it's oil, he could use it to light and for heat. Um, so that is Allah. So is there any way to, to not be stuck and have two Trumas Meisers from the barrels that are both Tame? Because you don't know which one. One's Tame, one's Tar. You don't know which one is Tame, which one is Tar. So postures, you have to take one from each and it's treat them as Tame and, and stuck. So the Gemara says, no, maybe I have, a, I have an option. I have an option. What do you do? Harezim may be shneiluginin. Bring two bottles, two empty bottles, two empty bottles. Binotel um, mizu kedei chumas meiser mishdehen. And from each barrel, you have a whole barrel of wine. One's tummy, one's tar. So take the amount enough for chumas meiser from both barrels, from each barrel. Take enough chumas meiser from each barrel. Put into two separate containers. So now I have two cups in my hand. Each of them have enough chumas meiser to cover both barrels. One of them is tame, one of them is tahar. I don't know which is which. So what do I do? I can make a tanai. The past two days we spoke a lot about tanoim and conditions and tanai ka- and the, the four conditions, the four rules of the Rambam and the Meiri said maybe there are ten rules of of tanoim. And then I make the following tonight. Im zehu tahar. I pick up the first one and I say, if this one is the tahar one, then all the chumas meiser should be in here. Now I might have chumas meiser. Harehu asitiv chumas meiser on everything. Ve'em lav. If this is the tame one, I have done nothing. If this is the tame one, this will stay meiser rishon tame. Ve'em lav lo asisi klum. The chozer v'yosa kem b'sheni. And then I do the same thing with the second one, the second cup. Whatever it is, if this is Tommy, I did nothing. If it's a star, so what ends up, what do I have, what are the two cups that I have? One of them is Truma, whichever one is Tar, that's the one that is Truma's Meiser for both, right? One is Meiser, and the other one is Meiser Rishon, which is not, no longer uh, uh, Tame, and um, it's, it might, it, which is no longer Tevel, no longer Tevel, there's no, truma, no, no more Truma's Meiser. So the Truma's Meiser is wherever, wherever it is, is Tahar, and the other container is Meiser Rishon Tameim. Both are Mutter Kohen. Both are Mutter Kohen, because a Kohen is allowed to eat Chulin Tameim at, at certain times. So both of them can be useful for the Kohen. The Achilas Truma, when it's Tar, is a Mitzvah Daraisa. Mitzvah Daraisa. The Kohen, it's not a Mitzvah Daraisa that applies today. Right? The Chassam Sofer points out that the only Mitzvah Daraisa that we have left today of eating something specific is Matzah. That's the only one. We don't have Achilas Karbanos. We don't have Achilas, uh, maybe Achilas Perishvias, if you hold that to Mitzvah Zaseh, the Ramban. Uh, uh, Achilas Meiser Rishon. Uh, we don't, uh, uh, spe- for a specific food, we don't, ha- we don't uh, have, have that. But Achilas, the, uh, trum- uh, the, the Mitzvah of eating Truma is a Mitzvah Daraisa. You have to find everything uh, here. The Rambam says in the last halacha of the Rambam in Hilchos Trumos, the, uh, the Rambam tells us, Kala ochel truma, mivarech birchas oso ma'achal. Right, let's say I'm eating a pomegranate of truma. Right, what's, what's truma samaisa's daraisa? Man, we've spoken about that machlokas a number of times. Rashi and Tosfas say dog and tirosh v'yitzar. So not pomegranates. Some, some reshown in a minority reshown and say maybe all shivas aminim. I think there's a rivet like that. But the Ramam says all fruit. All fruit is truma samaisa's daraisa. So the Ramam says, kala ochel truma. Mevarech, birch has also machal, you make a bori priya eight, viacharkach mevarech, asher kiddushanu bimikdusha so shalaron, vitzivanu lechal truma. You're going to use that lashon, all koanim are going to use that lashon, the nusuch that is usually only used for birch has koanim, they're going to use that for eating truma. The kach kibal nu burainu osam mevarech and afilu bachalas chutz laretz. The Ram says we've seen that bracha, bachalas chutz laretz, shagam achilas kache a gvul, ka'avoda. Even eating chalas chutz laretz would get that would get that uh, bracha. The Mari Kirkus there uh, says, this is based on a Tosefta, uh, and he says, maybe it's even alluded to in the Pasuk in Kisavo. Where the Tosefta says, kol osa kol mitzvah sarach lavarech. V'kivan shachilas truma mitzvah vadeh shesarach lavarech aleha. Umi meseches meiser sheni, v'lo shachachti mi lavarechacha. Right, we have, I didn't forget to make the bracha. What's that talking about? So Pashup Shat is a bracha on the hafrasha. We spoke about it in the last year. Hafrasha and Nesina. But says the Mari Kirkas on that Rambam, maybe, maybe the Efshel Lafarich is all talking about the Birchas Achila. 
When I eat shuma, I didn't forget to make the berch of the mitzvah. I didn't realize that I'm not eating stam chulin. I'm eating something special. Ve'ev shalafarish, the berch has achilo kamer, the kuli kra, bahachi mairi. Umisham yesh lo mot shagam achilas shuma tzricha bracha. Says the Mari Kirkus. So achilas shuma is a mitzvah de oraisa, as we know, that's the last halacha in hilchos shumas. Shumas is a big masechta that's, uh, that's on the horizon, but that is the... Uh, that is reflective, and therefore we do whatever we can to keep it tr- to keep it tahar, to keep it tahar. We don't just say, "Oh, they're both Tommy, Okay, give it to the Kohen. No, we do what we can to keep it um, to keep it in that way. Okay, so let's continue. So now we have two cups. We have two cups of ch- pot. One one cup is trumas meiser tahar. One cup is meiser rishon. That's that's that's. Uh, I'm allowed to eat the I don't know which is which. So what does the Kohen do? What does the Kohen do? So here we go. Says the um, Gemara. We add in a word here. Vishose. Right, the Mara full day isn't that word. Vishose, Vitovel, Vishose. He drinks the first cup of wine. Maybe he became Tame. Because remember, Midarabanan, food can make a person Tame. Midaraisa, food can't make a person Tame. Right? A person can only become Tame from an Avatoma and food, and food can't be an Avatoma. Right, food can't be avatoma. A dead body uh, is an aviavosa toma, something that touched a dead body, but a person can, can't become um, tummy mida araisa from the food. But mida rabbanon, Chazal tell us uh, in Mishnais and Seder Taurus that uh, that's a curse. So if I eat the, if I drink the cup of wine that's tame, so I'm tummy now. So now I have to go to the mikvah before I eat the second one because the second one is truma. So I'm tame, so I can't eat the, I can't drink the second cup of wine before I go to the mikvah. Divrei Rebbe, that's what Rabbi Huda Hanasi says. You have to, every, each cup of wine, you don't know. The first one is Suffolk Tame. Go to the mikvah and then drink the second cup of wine. Divrei Rebbe. Rebbe Reb Shimon Omer, ain't no tov al basof. No, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. After both cups, then you know your Vandai Tame, then you go to the mikvah. But each one, each one is Suffolk. Maybe you ate, ate the Truma Tahora first. So each one is Suffolk, therefore you don't have to go to the uh, mikvah. So what's the Nukudas Amachlokas here between Rebbe and Rebbe Reb Shimon? Three possibilities, really two. We're going to try one, we're going to reject it. We're going to have a second one. We're going to reject it, we're going to go back to the first one. All right, that's the flow until the end of the Masechta. Says the Gemara, my time of the Rebbe, what's the reason that Rebbe says, again, I have two cups of wine, they're both, one of them's Tommy, one of them's Tar. I have no idea which one is which, so I drink one, you got to go to the mikvah between each one. Says Rebbe, why? My time of the Rebbe, Ani Omer, Shema, Shasa, Mashkin, Tameim, Tchila. Maybe the first one you drank was Tame. So if the first one you drank was Tame, then you're Tame, and maybe you'll still have some liquid in your mouth when you put the truma in your mouth. So you have to go to the, you have to go to the mikvah. Uh, even though, what's the Chiddush here, as we'll see, this is a Suffolk, Suffolk de Rabbanon, Suffolk de Rabbanon, right? The liquid making myself Tame, even liquid becoming Tame. Sugi in the end of the first parak of Sachim, if you remember those, uh, the Rechinus uh, Karakonim Sugis. Right, the, uh, right, the, even liquid might not be able to become Tommy. Now we're talking about liquid making you Tommy. Right, he says, Suffolk, we are machmir here. So you have to go to the mikvah in between. Well, my time at Rebbe Lezer of Shimon, what's the reason Rebbe Lezer Shimon says you don't? Ani Omer, Shema, Shasa, Mashkin, Tameyan, Basof. Right, maybe he, right, maybe he drank it at the end. They don't have to worry about it. Don't have to worry about it. Interesting, it says Ani Omer. We've discussed in the past, Rebbe Yudah Hanasi is the only one in Shas. Uh, that has the phrase Omer Ani. Omer Ani, or Yosef Engel, if you remember, has a beautiful piece about that. Omer Ani is like Lanias Daiti. It's a reflection of Anava, a reflection of humility. So he's the only one that says Omer Ani, and he has a remez to that in, a, in a, I think, Tehillim Memhei. He has a Pasuk there that uh, alludes to writing down Torah Shebaal Peh. Uh, but Omer Ani, that's his, uh, that's his uh, Lushen of Anava. Here, the Gemara is using Ani Omer for a Blessed Reb Shimon who's arguing with Reb Yudha Nasi. So I'm not, not being Medayik or anything. I'm just saying the Gemara is using the opposite Lushen than what Reb Yudha Nasi u- uses sometimes uh, to explain the other Shita of Reb Lazar uh, Reb Shimon. So this is interesting. If we think about this Machlokas, we usually have the principle, what's, what's Reb Lazar Reb Shimon based on? Pashtus, Savit Rabban Lakula. So the Rabbanon this is a Savik de Rabbanon, and uh, we are going to be Mako. That's a Mishnah in Mesechas Taurus. Mishnah in Taurus tells us that the rule is Safeg Yadayim, Litame, Ulitame, Velitaher, Tar. All Sveikas, Vanatilas Yadayim, that's all Tumad de Rabbanon. Savik Tbershas Arabim, Tar. Savik Devre Sofrim. Ochal Ochlin Tameim. Shasa Mashkin Tameim. It's a Mishnah in Taurus. The only Mesechta, that's also the name of the Seder, at least Bizman Azeh. In the olden days, there was Mesechas Nezikin. 
right? The three Babas were Mesechah Nezikin and Seder Nezikin. But now we have one, Mesechah's Taurus and Seder Taurus. So there in Parak Dalad, the Mishnah says, Shasa Mashkin Tameim, Barosha Ruba Maim Shuvin, Osha Nofla Rosha Ruba, Shlosha Lugin Maim Shuvin. In all these cases, Sveiko Tahar. Because all these are Sveikos Durabanan, and therefore they are going to be Tahar. That's Sveik Durabanan Lakula. There is a famous question that we've dealt with in the past, uh, and that is the Ramban's Kasha on the Rambam. The Ramban's Kasha on the Rambam. And that is, the Rambam says that every time I violate an Isidarabanan, I'm also violating an Isidaraisa, because the Torah says you have to listen to the Rabbanan. So if I don't listen to the Rabbanan, I'm violating what it says in the Torah that you have to listen to the Rabbanan. Lo Sasur, right? Viasisus, and I say in a lo sase. So ask the Ramban, how do you ever have this principle of Savi Durabanan Lakula? Right? There's never a Savi Durabanan, there's never a Durabanan according to the Rambam. Every Durabanan is a Durabanan. How do you have any principle? of being mako by Nehemiah, of the Rabbanan, this is the Ramban, bangs the Rambam. When every sugya that talks about the Rabbanans are different than Dar Isis. Right? What does the Rambam do with this? What does the Rambam do with this? And the Ramban even has one line where he says, and if you want to tell me this, I don't think, I think that's Dachuk. But that's the answer that most Dachronim say. What the Ramban has in one line. I'll read it for this, I usually don't quote this one, but the Ran says it, the Drush Zaran. Drush Zaran in Drush Hay. Uh, the, the Ran says this, um, if I could find it here, the Ron, the, the Ron says, if I could find it, but he says here that the, 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 when the Kaddish Baruch Hu gave, gave the power to, let me just see if I could find it here. Um, I don't know if I can find it here. It's easier in the Sefer itself. But, the, uh, but the, uh, the Ron says, and he's followed by the, oh, here it is. Okay, I'll just, I won't read it. The Ramban says what the Meshachachma uh, fleshes out and what the uh, others say, and that is, even the Rambam, who says that every Durabanan is a Daraisa, that's only if you Vada'i did a Durabanan. So then, you did a Durabanan, you also violated a Daraisa. But the second, it's Suffolk, four words, Kahaygavna lo tiknu. Once it's Suffolk, so then the Rabbanan say, the whole thing falls away. Right? It's not, if I vada did a Durabanan, I vada did a Daraisa. If it's a Savi Durabanan, so then Mimela, I don't have to, uh, the Rabbanan say it doesn't, uh, it's not a din anymore. And the Meshachachma uh, explains and expands on that by saying that when it comes to din and Daraisa, there's something inherent, let's say there's a piece of pig. Inherently, those molecules are dangerous to my neshama. It's poison. It's poison for my neshama. So it's suffix, suffix poison, suffix po- poison lachumra. Because it's about this inherent item. But by the Rabbanon, the, does Hashem care chick, chicken and, and, and milk? It's a Rabbanon. Maybe one, a Bezdin in 100 years from now will change that. The point isn't the content of what the Rabbanon say. The point is to listen to the Rabbanon. It doesn't matter the content. But it's the, it's the, the, the shmia, the, the fealty to the Rabbanon. And he gives a mushal. And he says, it's not even a marshal, because sometimes the Rabbanan are called Malachim. But he says, Morid b'malchus. The king wants to build a highway through my backyard. I say, no, I'm going to stand up. It's good for the country. I stand up and I say, no way. Chayav Misa. Morid b'malchus is Chayav Misa. Does Hashem really care about this highway? Is there an Isser Daraisa? No. But the point is to listen to the king. So, so too, to listen to the Rabbanan. The second it's Suffolk, Memele, it's not a merit against the Rabbanan. It's not called a violation of not listening to the Rabbanan in that case. That's the difference. So, Kahai Gavna, Lo Tiknu, that's the, uh, the Meshachachma expands upon that. There's a different formulation I saw this afternoon from Rav Shimon Shkup. Rav Shimon Shkup in the Shari Yoshar has a, uh, a different formulation. Ubahad de Hiksha, this is in uh, Shar Aleph, Perek Zayin, where he says, Venir Lenny is Daiti, he says there's a big difference. Because even the Rambam, when he says, it's us, or every Durabanan is a Daraisa. So, is it a Daraisa of that specific Isser? Like, Suffolk Daraisa, Lechumra, by a, by a Suffolk, um, whatever it is, Treif, it's Treif if you did it? No. It's a general Losasur. It's, not, it's, a, it's a Klali Isser. It's not, a, it's not about each and every one. This is a question that we ask uh, in many different sugyas, what was called Klali Prati by the, uh, by the Achronim. Uh, Lifna Iver, if I cause somebody to do an Avera, is, is it a little bit shemitz of that Avera, or is it a general of Neiver? Chazi Shir. Chazi Shir. Is it Chazi Shir of each and every Avera, or is it Chazi Shir? It's all the same. Chazi Shir, Lif Neiver, you have all a number. Hidr Mitzvah. 
Is it a hidder mitzvah klali? Like I have a hidder mitzvah scorecard in Shamayim. I have all the mitzvahs, and then every hidder mitzvah that I do, it goes into that scorecard, or it's hidder mitzvah of every single mitzvah. You don't have to say the same thing by each one. Hidder mitzvah, chazi shir, lifna iver. So you might say this by losasur, by losasur of dinim durabanan. So he says it's a more general, and that would make it that would make it um, that would make it different. I saw, interesting, another comment, I don't think I, I mentioned this, that uh, from a Wachanan about Savi de Rabbanan Lakula, and then we'll, uh, and then we'll continue. He quotes uh, in, uh, all the way at the end of Kuntris Devre Sofrim Simen Aleph, the end of, you know, it's the second volume of Kovit Shiurim, so the second to last os there. He says, Savi de Rabbanan Lakula, is that a din vadai or a din suffix? Right, once I can be mako, Savi de Rabbanan Lakula, so therefore I'm not sure if I said a bracha or not, so I don't say a bracha, besides benching. Is that B'Torah's Vadai, the rabbis say, you are Vadai, not Chayiv? Or we're not sure, so just don't. We're not sure. So, which one is it? He says, Anafkamina. Anafkamina. Only he could think like this. Anafkamina. Vika Anafkamina Tuva. Inema desfegat Rabbanon Lakula B'Torah's Vadai or B'Torah's Safik. Kagon. Imhu Safik, Imhu Chayiv B'Mitzvah Drabanan. I have a Safik and I'm Chayiv in a Mitzvah Drabanan. So then, I'm not going to have to do the Mitzvah. Because I don't have to do the mitzvah. But what if I'm only not chayiv in the mitzvah b'torah safik? So then, could I be motzi someone who is mechuyiv b'davar? For sure. Says Rabbi Hanan, you go to the kula in all cases. So you're able to be motzi him. Mitzad, your own chayiv, you don't have to do it. Mitzad, could you be motzi someone else? Yeah, because what? You can't be motzi him? That would be a chumrah. Savit Rabbanan Lakula. So if it's Batoras Vadai, then Batoras Vadai, you can't be Motsi him, because you're Vadai Patur, and therefore you can't be Motsi. But if it's Batoras Suffolk, unbelievable. So you don't have to do it, but if somebody else, you want to Motsi them, you can be Motsi them, because you go to the Kula, you go to the Kula all around. That's what he, uh, he suggests here. Im Chayab be Mitzvah Durabanan, to me Sveka who Patur Vim Noma, do Paturak Batoras Suffolk, Im Kane, you Chala Hotsias Mishu who Chayab be Vadai. The zil hacha lakula, the zil hacha lakula. Each one is lakula. To who atzmo ain't no tzarech lekayim a mitzvah shemei no chayev. He himself doesn't have to do it. Become a kam yuchal hozi achirim shem who chayev b'davar. Maybe he is chayev and never can be motzi. I will name a dasafi gubel lakula, but there is vadai imkain who vadai pater, and then he can't be motzi others who are chayev. The koshi ain't mechuyev b'davar ain't motzi achirim yidei chovasim. And he has other nafkaminas, but that's uh, an unbelievable. Uh, Concept. Again, we've had but in the in the past when the Kula, remember we had a, a week or so ago where we had a week of Brera. We spoke about the Machlokas, Yamshal Shlomo, and most other Achronim. When we say Brera, uh, Brera, Yesh Brera Bidarabanan, Yesh Ain Brera Bidaraisa, is that based on Savi Daraisa Lachomer, Savi Daraisa Lakula, or no? Right? By, Durabana, by the, the Yamshal Shlomo, it said no. It's Daraisa Ain Brera, even if it's a Kula. And the Rabbana on Yesh Brera, even if it's a Chumrah. Most don't, don't assume that way. But even there, every time you have a, 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 one of these cases of Suffolk, Lukula, Lukumra, you have to ask whether it's Betoras Vadai or it is Betoras or it is Betoras Suffolk. Okay, let us continue. So we have this Machlokas Tanoim here. I have two cups of wine. One's, one of them's Tami, one of them's Tahar. So do you have to go to the mikvah after each one, after the first one? Because I might, might have become Tami. Rebbe says yes, or Blazer Reb Shimon says no. So says the Gemara, that can't be. That can't be. Why? Hakal modim b'shosa mashkin tameyin. Everybody agrees. If you drank vadai mashkin tamei, shehu aser loch ala filosofik truma. If you vad, if you drank vadai um, wine, that's tamei, then you're not allowed to eat suffik truma because the mafarshim explain because you're definitely in the world of tuma. So just because the, that's not a regular case of Savi Durban Lakula. There's like an Ikermina, Ikermina Torah, so to speak. You're Vadai Tame. So therefore, we're not going to let you eat Suffolk Shuma. Suffolk Mashkin, but by, if, you're, if you're only Suffolk, our case, Suffolk Mashkin, Kalama Modi Shu Mutur Lochala Filu Shuma Vadai. How could, how could Rebbe say Yeshita? Gemara says it should be obvious that it's only a, you know, a Suffolk Tuma, so you should be able to, to not go to the mikvah. So the Gemara says, I don't think that could be the case. So Ella. This is what we're, we're under, how we should understand Bahada Mastisa. This is how we should understand the Brisa. This is classic our Yerushalmi that very hard to know. There seems to be something missing in the Yerushalmi or at least missing in our understanding. So what's going on here? So we'll go with one of the Pshatim that uh, in, the, in the back, the Gilyonis of Rav Chaim Knievsky, Rev, Rev, the stipler of Akavisol Knievsky says, you have to add in a couple of words here. The case must be where you have the two cups. One cup you drank the whole thing and one tr- cup you drank Half a revius. Half a revius. Only a revius of wine could be metame. Could be metame. 
Right? That's a Mishnah in Mesechah's Me'iwa. That has to be a Revius. So that's what we're talking about here. My time at the Rebbe Lazar Reb Shimon. Why does Rebbe Lazar Reb Shimon say that you don't have to go to the mikvah until after you drank both cups, all cups? Me'achar sh'al yidei zeh. Va'al yidei zeh nizbara toma. Only if you drank, if he drank a Revius from both cups would he require tevila. Right? And therefore, if you didn't drink a Revius from both cups, you're still Suffolk and you're good. And you're good. It's still Suffolk to Rabbanan. My time at the Rebbe, Shelo Yavoli de Revius. No, Rebbe's going to tell you to go to the mikvah because you know what? If you, if you're, if you treated Suffolk now, maybe next week you'll have the same situation, but you'll drink a Revius from both and you'll think, oh, I didn't go to the mikvah last time, so I don't have to go to the mikvah now. So Xera, Xera de Rabbanan, uh, that you w- shouldn't have to go. I didn't see those who asked, but Pashtus, this is Xera, Xera. Right? This is Xera if you don't drink a Revius because you might come to drink a whole Revius. But even if you drink a whole Revius, it's a Durabanan. It's Tomas, Tomas, Tomas Mashkin. So I'm not sure. The answer is always Kulachat Xera who. Right? That uh, it's not Xera like Xera because if you don't make the second Xera, the first Xera won't hold, won't hold up. So that's always an easy answer. You never know when to say that. You know, it's a Xera like Xera, Kulachat Xera, but that's the, um, but that's what. So Rebbe is, is, uh, is goes there in that, in that case. Oh, my time at the Rebbe Reb Shimon. Bishos Pach has me so the Gemara says, one second. So Rabbi Lezer Shimon is Mako because he only drank less than a Revius. But less later, Rabbi Lezer Shimon shall be able to Revius. Isn't that, isn't that a Xera that you should make? Now the Gemara is flipping on that side. It's such an obvious Xera. People are, what, you're going to measure? Now it's a Revius, now it's a little less than a Revius. It's not really so easy to, to take advantage and to, and to violate. So the Gemara says, that can't be the Machlokas. It can't be a Machlokas about, oh, if you drink a Pach has me Revius, is there going to be a Xera? Because everybody would agree that there should be a Xera. Everybody would agree that there should be a Xera. Um, so the Gemara answers, go back to option one. Go back to option one. Amar Yosi Barbun, Ein Elakahadin Pitra Kadmaya. Go back to the first answer. He drank a full Revius from one container. Does he have to go to the mikvah? The Rebbe Chash Hashem Ashasa Mashkin Tamei and Betchila. Well, as Rebbe Shimon Chash Hashem Ashasa Mashkin Tamei and Basof. And the question is whether uh, you have to be Choshesh that the, uh, he drank the tummy one first. Or you could assume and hope that uh, he drank the, se- the tummy one second. The whole idea of suffix tumma, uh, by the way, we know the rules are suffix tumma bishus harabim tahor, bishus hayachid tame, uh, and that itself is up to much, uh, much discussion. Big sugi is in the uh, beginning of Masechah's Nida, whether, w- what kind of psak is that? We know when, whenever you have a t- case of uh, a suffix in halacha, uh, there's different types of psakim, right? By mamanis, hamosim echever lavaraya. By Tumah Vatara, Safik, Bishazrabim, Sobe Bishaz Yachid. By Yisr Vahetar, Sobe Dorais Alachom, Sobe Dorais Alakula. By each of those, one always has to ask, what type of psak is this? Is the Torah telling me, bevad, like we just said from Rabbachan, Bevada, you could assume this? Or we don't know what to do? So the Torah gives you rules. By Safik Tumah, Pashtus, it seems like just these are the rules. Right? Because there could even sometimes be a Tartu de Sasri. Right? Remember the case of Shnei Shvilin? There are two roads, and each of us walk down the roads. One of the rows has a dead body under it. One of them doesn't. We both come to the rabbi. What do we do? We don't know which one was, was Tame. So the Gemara, the Mishnah says in Taurus, if they come separately, the rabbi will say, oh, Savik versus Rabbim, you're Tahar. An hour later, the other guy comes, oh, Savik versus Rabbim, Tahar. They're both Tahar. That's not logical. Right? They're, one of them's Tame. One of them walked down the bad road, the Tame road. Doesn't matter. If they came together, right, then they have to, okay, I can't like say it with a, say, with a straight face. I can't be m- 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 both. But so you see that the, the, the rules of Suffolk Tumah Vatara are different. So every area of halacha, Suffolk Mamon, Suffolk Isser, Suffolk Tumah Vatara, has, uh, has to be analyzed. Just one, uh, one thought as we, as we finish up Demai uh, in Salik Perak HaMazben, these seven prakim, we have to recognize this whole Mesechta was based basically on a chumrah. Rov Ame Haaretz Ma'asrenein. Right? Most, most Ame Haaretz out there, they do a good job. And we can trust them. The whole... Mesechta is based on going above and beyond. And we have to remember, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, again, we could have a shir about Chumrah, which we're not going to have now. Some Chumras are appropriate, some are not. But this Mesechta reflects the fact that we care about what we eat. And we have a Savik Machalas Asuros, even if it's not a rove, we have to make sure, you know, what we eat defines us, right? Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar has a whole sefer all about food, because he knows Jews do food a lot, right? Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, Shulchan Shal Arba, in the kiss of Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, big fat sefer, he talks all about the halachas that apply to eating. The tilos yadayim, and amotzi, and um, the whole, how are you supposed to eat, you're supposed to leave over for all, you're not supposed to eat till you're full. But it's all based on, but this Masechta was based on going above and beyond for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Remember the Gemara in Brachas, Tavchaf, Amebez, and the Babli, 
Right? The, the Malachim wondered why HaKadosh Baruch Hu shows favoritism to Klal Yisrael. Right? Amr Malach, um, most of the time in, in, in Chazal, the Malachim are complaining about us. Not, not often. Once in a while we have the Malachim, don't you love B'nai Yisrael? Most of the time they're like, don't give them the Torah. Why aren't they saying Hala on Rosh Hashanah? Right? They're always like looking at, I don't know. So, Amr Malach Eshar Zavani HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Rebona Shalom. The Malachim say to Hashem. Rebona Shalom. Kasu B'Sor HaSech HaShel Lo Yisaf Hanem Lo Yikach Shochad. It says in your Torah, you don't show favoritism, you don't take bribes. Palo Ata Nosu Panem Lo Yisrael. And you show favoritism to Am Yisrael. How can you do that? Not fair. Right? You run a just world. It's not fair. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, how can I not show them favoritism? They go above and beyond for me. I wrote in my Torah, V'yachalta V'savata U'veirachta. You only have to bench if you're satiated. But they bench, even on a kezayis, they go above and beyond for me. I go above and beyond. So again, it doesn't mean that we always should go the tzad l'chumrah, but in certain areas, we have to show HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we're going above and beyond, uh, going above and beyond for him. Right? The Rabbeinu Yonah, the beginning of Perk Yavos, Rabbeinu Yonah, the first mission on Asus Yag Torah, you know, if you do what you have to do, okay, that doesn't show so much love. If you do above and beyond, we go beyond for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so that already shows. I'll read the Lashon of Rabbeinu Yonah. Vasyag hu davar gadol u meshubach, laaso siyag v'gedol mitzvos. Right, hayari es davar Hashem. If you're mekayim what you have to do, fine. If you have mekayim even more, a little bit more, that already flex. Right, that's the Gemara Chagiga in the Bavli, right? If you know, eno dome, if you learn something a hundred times, a hundred and one times. A hundred could be like, oh, I've made it. Now I can tell people I learned a hundred times. A hundred, why are you doing that extra one? A hundred and one? You already got to 100. Lishma. Lishma. Because that shows HaKadosh Baruch Hu I'm doing it for you. So we should be zocha to be able to spend many more, t- more times learning wonderful, amazing, amazing. What is chus? Think about it. When was the last time in, in Jewish history that there were hundreds of thousands of people learning Yerushalmi? Learning Yerushalmi. Again, not chas v'shalom to take the place of the Bavli, but just as a hosafa. Think about it. what is chus it is to be part of this, uh, this revolution, this uh, amazing... Uh, um, Chevra that we have. Bez Hashem, we should be Zocha to learn Bavli, learn Yerushalmi. Bring Nachas to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Bez Hashem, the next theme should be in Yerushalayim, Ir HaKadosh. Take the same? Okay, I just turned off the... Uh... Okay. The video's on, but the, this is off. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yehei <laughs> <laughs> 
Ose shalom bim ramah bu brachamav, yase shalom aleinu, v'yakol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Thank you very much for coming. I just want to briefly thank the hosts, Vinyamin and Esti Kamenetsky, for opening up their homes. I want to welcome our president, the president of the OU, Mitch Ader, who came all the way from Queens. There are people here from all over, Crown Heights, Muncie, people here, uh, Teaneck, yeah, Bergenfield. But thank you very much for coming. Flatbush, Camp Hask, Yerushalayim. Oh, wow. Okay. And I would like to welcome Rabbi Glasser, Rabbi Yaakov Glasser from Saik and the OU. Um, very briefly, everyone is invited to go into the kitchen and participate in a Suda's mitzvah. And we'd like to thank Rabbi Rosner for coming down from Camp Kaley. I just want to mention that this Siyam and Suda is dedicated in memory of Sara Freda Bas Shlomo, who passed away recently in the middle of Shiva, a very, very close friend of the Kamenetskis, who went out of their way to open up their house despite being in this situation. We thank them tremendously, and this Sara Freda Bas Shlomo, her father was president of the OU, so that's a real OU connection, and this, this Siyam and the learning should be a tremendous Eloy for their neshama. Everyone, please participate in the Suda and come back. One more thing. Rabbi Rosner, besides being a tremendous Magid Sher Marbitz Torah, is a Mechaber Svarim, writes beautiful Svarim. He's brought down some of his Svarim. They're sitting in the boxes over there. Please take. And Rabbi Rosner is also in the middle of a building campaign. Rabbi Rosner doesn't say his shear sitting in his basement. He has a beautiful shul, and that's where he says the Yushalmi shear from, from the Hare Yushalayim. So that's ongoing, and anyone who would like to participate, that is a beautiful thing. Um, and any other messages regarding is an upcoming safer? Everyone to participate in the Paninim. The three, the three, the three English farm and there's a Hebrew Shalom Rav. Um, they're each thirty dollars. Um, but um, there's a safer hopefully by next Pesach to have it out on Shabbos uh, Hagodah Like the you'll see the Shalom Rav on Yom and Arayim, So the next one in that in that one. If anyone wants to help participate, feel free. I'll give you the the contact. Simi Zimbalist. Some of you might know him. In uh, in the shuls, he's the one to contact. And if anybody wants to. Join us. In Yerushalayim. In Yerushalayim. And even, Beit Shemesh. Uh, even uh, <laughs> long distance right now. To be able yes. To, uh, to help you okay. I wanted to mention two points very, very briefly before we conclude. One is, as Rabbi Rosner mentioned, this may be the first time in history, I don't know, certainly in Tinek. I asked uh, Benjamin Kamenetsky, he said he's, he's confident this is the first time there's a public Yushalmi Siyam on a Masechta. So there's something very, very special, something we have to appreciate. It reminds me, there was a letter that was written to Rameyu Shapiro. Everyone here, I'm assuming, who's already learning Talmud Yushalmi, Talmud Bavli Dafiyemi is already part of their repertoire for a while already. And he was asked by a group of people in Berlin. Their Shiloh was, we were macabre on ourselves to start learning Daf Yemi, a Daf a day, and they got to the end of a Masechta, where maybe it was the end of Brachas, perhaps even, that the Daf wasn't a full Daf, so they wanted to know if they were being the kind of their nether of learning a Daf a day, if the Daf is not a full Daf. So he answered what he answered. But I, I copied out the, the language that he wrote to them. This is Cheshvan Tafresh Pei So we're talking around two months no, this is a 23. 23, this is literally two months after Daf Yemi started. We're about to, for all those keeping, keeping score on the calendar, we're about to hit the 100th year of the Daf Yomi Bavli cycle. So this is Cheshvan Tafresh Pei Dalit, around two months after the Bavli cycle started. And he writes, Mechtava Migiyani, your letter reached me, Vesamachti, I'm so excited. Lehivada, to know, Kigam, Bechug HaCharedim, Be'eretz Ashkenaz, even in Eretz Ashkenaz, in Germany, Matzah, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm enthusiastic to find out that there are people in Berlin and Germany learning that this is 1923, right after Daf Yemi started. This is a letter to Romero Shapiro. They wanted to know if they get to the last Daf from Brachis, and the Daf is only part Daf, not a full Daf. They're Mekayim, they're Neder. So that, that's the truth. That's it's in the Chuvis, our mayor. Romero Shapiro is Chuvis. But when I'm 
pointing out over here is, is that he says how excited he is to find out that people in, Ashk in Berlin actually took on to learn that Yemi. And I feel the same way in a certain sense. The, as Rabbi Rosner mentioned, this revolution of Tamil Yerushalmi, whoever's here, take some pictures and share this with your grandchildren because this is something that's going to be, this is the first time we're starting this new cycle and this revolution. And this, this, it gives me this feeling of, it's unbelievable, I could say the same thing Amir Shapiro said, that I have the opportunity. He says, Tasi li ba'alma da'asi ki zachis li is ben mazaki harabim. So Baruch Hashem, I could say the same thing, I have that opportunity, and everyone here to be part of it. So that's something special. One more thing I wanted to say, that we are standing, we are now in the Ben HaMetzarim, in the, as Benyamin opened up with, the time between Shavas and Betamos, and Tishabov, and our hearts are focused on Yerushalayim. And we all know the Chavetz Chaim in Shochan Aruch and Simen Tzadik Dal talks about how a person should always be facing and his mind as much as possible be facing towards Eretz Yisrael, towards Yerushalayim, towards the Kachayak Adashim, because that's the place Chazal say the Tfilos go up to Shemayim. I saw this past Shabbos that Chavetz Chaim in Machna Yisrael, which was written for the soldiers who conscripted into the Russian army. So he's talking to people that are possibly in Siberia without Yiddishkeit for sure, and pr probably even not with the sufficient gashmis that they need to be able to, to survive. And he talks about the different halachas, what they have to do, what they, don't, what they don't have to do, and he talks about tefillah. And he ends off, and he says that even if you can't daven at all, you should at least daven something in any language that that you know, that you're able to say. But he says, there are, and I, I copied out the language, which is fascinating. He says, Acha Iker, this is the end of, Tzarech Shalo Yichaser Ba Shnei Dvarim. There are two things. After everything is said and done, and you're just davening the few words in your own language they have time for. There are two things you have to be careful to make sure that are part of your tefillah. One is he says, Shetia Me'emek Halev, Eloi Me'asaf Alochutz, it should be from the depths of your heart. And if it says, if it's possible, that you can bring yourself to cry, that's even better. That's number one. Number two, brings the Pasuk that he brought previously. And he brings the end of the Pasuk. This is, this is talking to the Russian soldiers. They're doing nothing else besides davening the few words that they are able to put together in their own language, but make sure that Yitzfila goes through Yerushalayim to the Beis HaMikdash, into the Kachek HaDashim, because that's where Yitzfila is going to bevade le'tosh Yitzfila se'reka. So I, I was thinking, al Darach Drush, we know Chazal say, a person is kevea mokayim for his Torah, should be his place where he davens. And the Pasuk is, mokayim harina, shamtahe mokayim at Tfila. I don't know the exact language, but I was, th I was thinking, simply means a person should make sure to daven where he learns. But perhaps, we could think about it this way. We're learning Yushalmi now. Yushalmi was created by the Chachamim of Yushalayim. We're focusing now our hearts and our tefillahs to Yushalayim. We all know that Torah and tefillah go together, one without the other. They each need each other to have their impact. So now at this time, you have that makayim of Torah, the space, the Klal Yisrael getting together, sitting together, celebrating the Talmud Yushalmi. So we have that power, that inspiration, the Shefa of Torah of Yerushalayim, that should be an opportunity to join together with our hearts and our tefillahs that are pointed towards Yerushalayim. And with that, we should be able to celebrate Tisha B'Av with a built Beis HaMikdash, a Binyan Beis HaMikdash, Yerushalayim, Ir HaKodesh, from Heirah V'Yameinu. Before we wrap up, I'll, I'll pass you the tshuva. Here it is. I'll tell you where it is. He, talk, he, he, has, he has a tshuva about it. It's a shtickle, it's a shtickle taira. Yeah, it's about the same amount of time. Yeah. Um, I would like to introduce Rabbi Yaakov Glasser um, to say a few words before we close it out. Rabbi Shweid said there's one more speech. So he's Ahmed Aleph, <laughs> and I'm Ahmed Beis. <laughs> Um, my kids have a toy microphone at home that they run around pretending they're speaking into a microphone. I feel like that's what this is, um, since I feel a little crazy. I, uh, I want to thank the Kamenetskis for hosting on behalf of the OU, on behalf of all of our various Lomdim. 
I want to share with everyone that when Rabbi Rosner referred to the cavalry who tried to claim his uh, engagement in this incredible endeavor um, after he had resisted, so I was, I was the B team. I went in afterwards to try to see if I could convince him. And Rabbi Rosner and I go way back. We were in Rav Rosenzweig's year together. And by together, I mean that I used Rabbi Rosner's notes to pass Rabbi Rosenzweig's bechinas, uh, as well as an entire generation of Talmudim of Rabbi Rosenzweig. But we were in the shir together, and we have Baruch Hashem, a relationship. We actually just had you for lunch uh, for our Shabbos recently. So I called Rabbi Rosner, and I made my pitch. I think we should try to do Yerushalmi. And in the course of this conversation, so Rabbi Rosner said to me, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Tell me, do you really think what Klal Yisrael needs and wants do you really think what Klal Yisrael wants is to learn Yerushalmi? And I said, no, <laughs> of course not. No one wants to learn Yerushalmi. But if you give the shear, people are going to learn Yerushalmi. And kachava. And kachava. Because we connect to our rabbeim. We connect to people who are transmitters of Mesora. And we connect to people who bring to bear not only the substance and the content of Torah, but a broader context that allows us to elevate ourselves in terms of our broader Yerushalayim and our Avodas Hashem. To just close with the theme that Rabbi Shwed mentioned, and it is indeed an incredible covenant to work every day closely with Rabbi Shwed, which if there can be an app for it, there will be an app for it. And uh, his endless creativity and energy is absolutely incredible. Uh, but to just close with the notion, every single time we daven, and we take three steps back at Shemona Esrei, we close our tefillah with the following juxtaposition. We say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, V'sein chalkeinu b'sora secha, v'sham na'avadcha b'yira kimei olam b'chshanim kadmonios. We connect our tefillah for success in our chalik and Torah with our aspiration that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should reconstitute the Beis HaMikdash and ultimately redeem the Jewish people. Because the pathway to the redemption of Am Yisrael and the ultimate opportunity for Klal Yisrael to return to Eretz Yisrael, to rebuild the Beis HaMikdash, and to live a redeemed life as a nation, the pathway to get there ultimately is not just the study of Torah, but V'sein Chalkeinu B'Sora Secha. For each and every individual, to determine what is their particular orientation and connection to Torah. What inspires, motivates, and moves them. What is the portal through which they can engage the wisdom of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and have it ultimately animate their broader religious life. And for those sitting around this table, you found that incredible point of engagement in learning with Rabbi Rosner, in learning Yerushalmi. Our goal is to create not one big table. That's not our goal. Our goal is to create thousands and thousands of tables. Many and multiple opportunities for people to discover their connection with Torah, with Yahadus, with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and to be able to grow, not just in the substance of their learning, but in the manner in which that learning transforms themselves and their families. And that's also part of what we're here to gather together to celebrate. This siyum is part of a larger context. It's part of a larger context of the All Torah initiative that allows us to bring this world of Torah to so many other people. And for that, we thank all of you for being part of that journey. And we welcome your shutfis. We welcome your contribution. We welcome your partnership to create the next hundred tables around which people will finish the Mesechta, the Limud, the opportunity to engage with Torah that speaks to them. And Be'ezus Hashem, if we create those tables all over Klal Yisrael, saying Chalkeinu B'Sora Secha, then we will be Zoha to Visham Na'avod Chabiru HaKimei Olam Uchshonim Kadmonios. Have a wonderful night, Mazel Tov. Thank you, Rabbi Glasser. Again, I have to thank the tech team over here, Eldi Melech Flam and Usher Tesser, and Racheli Schwartz, who's standing in the back, who was involved in putting this together. And once again, thank you to the Kamenetskis for hosting. And it should be a Eloi Neshama for Sarah, Freda, Bashlomo, Neshama, Shavan Aliyah, and all the learning that comes out of here. And the learning 
that was done here tonight, and people are going to see this across the globe, Bezra Hashem. And anyone who continues learning Yerushalmi that comes out of this Asifa should be an Eloi for her neshama. Thank you, thank you, thank you.